Formula One Digitals, Rally Digitals, Digitals at Le Mans, Drifting Digitals. You're likely familiar with the classic links between mechanical watches in the motorsport sphere, like your Rolex Daytona and Hoya Octavia Carrera in Monaco, but did you know that digital watches are just as integrated into motor racing and indeed driving more generally? In this video, we'll cover the first racing digitals of the 70s, the entry of brands like Tissot, Citizen, Seiko and Casio onto the scene, Senna's favourites, watches during the 80s Group C era, digitals of the need for speed 90s for cars and motorcycles, rallying, drifting, and even some modern examples from the 2000s up till today. I've not seen anyone cover this topic thoroughly, so I think you'll learn something new here. I know I have, so strap your seatbelt on and let's go flat out, as Colin McRae would say. cars one might be driving in 1975 were most likely a Volvo 240, but for the more adventurous and deeper pockets, there were the likes of the Ferrari 308, later driven by Tom Selleck, and the Porsche 930 Turbo. Digital watches in LED form had been on the market since 1972, with the Hamilton Pulsar, with the dynamic scattering and twisted pneumatic LCD watches arriving shortly afterwards in the same year with the BWC Optel Dynamic Scattering Mode LCD and the Gruen Teletime. Digital watch brands linked into the driving and racing car aesthetic from a marketing perspective, with examples like this 1975 Swiss-made Bueller Bertoni Stratos range named after the Lancia Stratos, which was also designed by the guy who designed the watch a super prolific car designer for brands like Lamborghini, Ferrari and Maserati. You also see variants under the Degena brand. And cool fact is that the concept version of the car was featured in the 1988 Michael Jackson film Moonwalker. This 1976 Netpro Jaguar XGS watch was another fun example, themed aesthetically after the car, and this Itron LED advert makes some racing allusions. Bueller would further link into racing themes with the connection to the BMW brand, and I particularly liked this 1979 Anadigi model. On the LCD side, we have the Seiko 0634 in 1975. The advertising quickly ties to the motor racing theme, as you can see from this poster. Even cooler for me is Hoyer, a long-standing brand in the racing sphere, pivoting into electronics, an interesting of Jack Hoyer after first developing the digital stopwatch in 1972 and coming up with the iconic Hoyer Chrono Split, featuring both an LCD and LED screen, later adding double LCD options which enables you to tell the time and see the chronograph running at the same time. It was a natural move into the more tangible racing connections with a Ferrari based model and you could see it on the wrist of their lead driver Nicky Lauda in 1976 during his intense battle with James Hunt in the season Lauda was so horrifically injured at the German Grand Prix, with him continuing to wear it afterwards here in 1977. Here is Carlos Reutemann with his teammate Gilles Villeneuve wearing a chrono split in 1978. Additional models from Hoyer in 1977 were the Manhattan watch and Senator watch, with the very cool special edition Ford split timer watch designed by Ford Rally Sport being manufactured by Hoyer. I'll only mention it in passing as I haven't seen too many explicit motor racing links, but the Omega Chrono Quartz is the other obvious famous digital chronograph of the time to mention, although I will note that there is a hint of a link with their sponsorship of the 1978 Safari Rally referenced on this poster. I am stretching it though. In the more casual driving realm, the bull of a Computron of 1976 was often called a driver watch due to the angle of the display being amenable to reading of the time whilst driving. This followed on a tradition of this style for LEDs from brands like Jazz and the 1976 Girard Perigo casquette. Tissot's brand and motor racing goes back a ways to 1958, and in the digital realm alongside Bueller and Degena, Tissot also made the link with Petoni in 1976 for a similar watch. But the F1 collection in 1978, which became the basis of their sponsorship of the Lotus Formula 1 team in 1978, with Mario Andretti being the winning driver in Formula 1 that year, was where they moved into cooler terrain. The founder of Lotus, Colin Chapman, would wear one, and Hadinki interviewed Andretti on his collection, and this awesome example, apparently solid gold, was given to him by Tissot for winning that year. The next iteration of the collaboration would be in three different versions, a rebadge of the Omega Sensor Quartz Calibre 1640. And here is Riccardo Paletti wearing his in 1982. Generally speaking, drivers aren't normally wearing large chunky watches in the car as it adds unnecessary weight, so they're normally for show for the sponsor when they're outside of the car. Although marketed in a few other ways, the first plastic digital watch, building on the provisional research from Tissot Idea Research Division, was the Casio F100. This made it very lightweight and suitable for jogging, wearing whilst running from aliens, but also within the marketing campaign for motor racing. Which makes sense, but I've yet to positively identify a racing driver wearing one. If you know of one, let me know in the comments. Shifting to the other Japanese brand we've not mentioned yet, Citizen has a very cool collaboration in 1978 with Rolf Stommelen, both a Formula 1 and sports car driver, in the marketing of this multi-timer LC watch. 
Nelson Piquet would wear a Citizen Digi Anna 41-98-18 when he won the F1 championship in 1981. I'll sneak in the racing theme Citizen D046 from 1985 whilst I'm here, as well as these funky collaborations with Michelin that they commissioned for Citizen for anniversaries in 1988 and 1998. You don't see any pure digitals from Citizen these days, but there is the occasional motor theme racing Anna Digi model like this one. On a side note, if anyone can identify the watch on the wrist of the 1979 World Rally Championship winner Bjorn Valdegaard, let me know in the comments. And whilst you're at it, the NASCAR legend Dale Earnhardt wore a couple of different digital watches during his multiple championship wins, so let me know on those as well. <laughs> In 1982, we see the Class C era of Le Mans beginning, with crazy fast cars, starting with winners British Derek Bell and Belgian Jackie Ix in the Porsche 956. When I was looking through some pictures from the era, I was happy to see Derek Bell had on a digital watch in this 1983 photo, and I believe it might be a J100 pace runner, the Sting favourite. This is a convenient segue to recent weeks where Autodromo released their Group C themed digital watch that drew upon this whole era of racing that ran between 1982 and 1993 which is beloved by motorsport fans. You can see the stylings of the different Group C cars of the time, but in particular the 1989 Sauber Mercedes C9 with the sleek design and those highlighted yellow wing mirrors. Whilst I'm here, I noticed that Manuel Reuter in the Sauber C9 team that won Le Mans in 1989 was wearing a digital watch. It looks a bit like a Timex Ironman to me, but I wasn't sure, so let me know if you've got a guess in the comments. The alternate colourings on my model was also a reference to similar alternate colourings of wing mirrors of some Group C cars. It's pricey, but I absolutely love this watch and it was the motivation behind me making this video, so thanks Autodromo. But let's put it into reverse and get back to 1982 for a big power slide through Casio. In 1982, Casio's watch based on Module 160 would form the basis of a couple of watches, both a Formula 2 watch which was based upon their sponsorship of that sport and the team that was led by Mike Thackwell, which carried over into a much sought after Formula 1 branded Honda watch that would also carry over to their 1983 G-Shock Square and this counter watch. Carrying on the G-Shock Square theme, although I could be wrong, I think that Hanno Mikola, the Finnish rally driver, is wearing one here next to the famous Audi Quattro rally car, which was the first really effective use of four-wheel drive in the sport. He seems to enjoy a digital as I've seen a couple of them. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver because we are competing. We are competing to win. Now you can't do a video on motorsport on digital watches and racing without covering the amazing Brazilian multi-world champion Ayrton Senna, and 1983 is a nice time to weave in his journey that we'll take a little detour for, the scenic route so to speak. Here he is with Martin Brundle in Formula 3 the year before he joined Formula 1 wearing a Casio calculator watch. Hero status confirmed right there for many of you I'm sure. This initial Casio love would carry it on to his Formula 1 career throughout his battles with teammate and adversary the Professor Alain Prost where he was well known for wearing a Casio T1000 thermometer watch, originally released in 1982, always noticeable due to that white dot on the bottom middle. Potentially even cooler, if the Casio gang don't hate me, is his switch to the use of the Jujaro designed Seiko Speedmaster LCD, which was launched in 1983 with the SBA028 and SBA022 and weird and wonderful SBA018. As well, it has the cool slanted display for ease of reading whilst driving, Vacheron Constantin American 1921 style. To make it even better, the NASCAR King Richard Petty, who won 200 races and 7 NASCAR Cup Championships, wore one of these too. There are a whole bunch of reissues of this one from 2018 to 2019, with some limited editions too, which are just so cool, and I really need one of these in my life. Whilst I'm on Seiko, I'll reference their other main racing focus series, The Race Master, beginning in 1988 with a few variants. This includes a cool collaboration with Honda Racing International, so it seems Honda was flirting with Casio's competition. Another nice film driving digital reference from 1983 was Blue Thunder, which I've somehow still not seen. The AA85 was famously used as a timer with graphical display in this tense scene. In 1983, the iconic Toyota AE86 was launched which was central to the story of Japanese drift king Kaichi Tsuchiya, whose street racing around the mountain passes of Japan formed the basis of the sideways style of driving recently showcased in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. He would go on to be a class winner at Le Mans in 1995 in a Honda NSX and 1999 in the Toyota GT1. 
A major cultural infiltration was the manga Initial D in 1995, which was heavily influenced by the life of Kaichi Tsuchiya, including the AE86, and even had him as a consultant on the anime. This would recently be celebrated in the hype 2020 watch G-Shock Initial D collaboration. The links between Casio and Drifting would continue with their sponsorship of the more formalised sport Formula Drift in 2012, which included more general watches like this 2012 Formula Drift Asia 6900 and 2013's G7 1900, with Ken Gushi being the face of the promotion. The idea of speeding along in your Ferrari was still very present in the 80s, personified by OutRun, but the popularity of motorbikes is evident as well in the success of the ride-on simulator game in arcades, Hang On, in 1985. Casio's presence in various forms of motorbike sport can be seen in their 1986 catalogue with different MotoGP-themed options, as well as their sponsorship choices like the 1989 motocross Honda RC125, which they linked into their 1989 wrist instrument Speed Memory 100. These motorcycle racing links have continued until more recent times, with cool examples like these Kawasaki team models, including a specific Kawasaki Ninja watch, the G Spike range, and the GA120, with a design based upon a motorcycle brake. Monaco, the place to see exotic cars, and this is a new one. It's the McLaren F1. The 90s is where the era of Sonic the Hedgehog speed and the 1 in 1000 digital chronograph and digital tachymeter really starts, with the Casio DW6000 kicking off the former and the DW400 at the latter. Other brands like Alba, the sub-brand of Seiko, have their W358 and W348, the very futuristic speedy options from Casio, included the STR1000, GPX1000, CBX1000 and GPZ1000. 1993's DW6200 is one of my personal favourites and I own one myself, I just love the asymmetric design and pusher style. Also in 1993, the LED indicator that would flash as you approach the end of the timer was a nice additional feature. Michael Schumacher would go on to dominate things within the F1 world, which is sadly where digital watch prominence starts to fade in that sport, aside from a cool Williams collaboration from G-Shock during the Damon Hill and Jacques Villeneuve winning years, but at least we had a bit of a last hurrah in the mainstream with Nigel Mansell's Xeon collaboration in 1992, the same year he won the F1 in the Williams car. Yes. So whilst Formula 1 is on the back burner, let's get back into the dirt with Rally. The 1985 G-Shock 2 was an early example from Casio that had mud-resistant buttons and was themed after Rally-style driving. With this continuing into 1995's Mudman, of course including Honda versions and a later Toyota Land Cruiser version. Later models would even include a specific Rally mode with the 9010 and GW M850, and models designed specifically for desert racing. But when you think 1995 and Rally, only one name comes to mind. With his famous motto, if in doubt, flat out, this is of course Colin McRae in his Subaru Impreza 555. In that year, he won the World Rally Championship before Tommy Mackinnon began to dominate with his Mitsubishi. I've spotted him here with a Casio BP100, clearly concerned about his blood pressure after rolling the car seven times in one race in one instance. He's also been spotted wearing a Satina DS, as well as a well-worn looking G-Shock option. Staying on the rally theme, a lesser well-known brand that is entrenched into that scene launched in 2003, which was the Fast Time Co-Pilot range, designed specifically by co-pilot drivers for their peers. It's probably because of this heritage that it seemed to have been on the wrist of everyone within the sport, and they do really fun limited edition models. Even the Seiko Pulsar brand has got on the rally game with the fun PV4005, and they've been the sponsor of the M Sport World Rally Team since 2009. A fun little sidestep here is 1996's Timex Humvee deal, which was agreed with AM General, themed after the chunky vehicle. Cool watch. 1999's Casio Redman is a real fun and lesser known watch within Casio's Master of G range. It screams racing, in large part due to its echoes of the original dual LCD screen that I've also seen on things like this fun Nixon made Adidas dual screen. But the originator of that style itself wasn't finished in digital watch land, and in 2002, Tag Heuer released the Micrograph F1 with one in 
100 seconds and later 2004 micro timer with 1 in 1000, with both stating official timekeeper of the FIA F1 World Championship on the back. There are models of these with diamonds and a couple of super ridiculous versions. Parrot strap anyone? The other Formula 1 theme watch from them with a digital element is the Formula 1 CAC 1111D with Omega X33 vibes. In 2014, Lewis Hamilton would be winning at Mercedes. No digital watch links for him, but Mercedes the brand has a couple I've put up on screen. But his competitors over at Red Bull and its various iterations have a very strong link with Casio, in particular with the Edifice range, with Vettel and Weber very much front and centre in the marketing. This is more their analogue range, but many of them have an Anadigi element, and here is a select few. Weber enjoys a normal G-Shock, and here are a couple of cool examples. When Vettel isn't being made to wear the relevant sponsor watch of his team, it seems his own choice is a Garmin 4Runner, and strangely enough, this wasn't from their Mark range, which is their driving-specific watches. Another man who enjoys a G-Shock is Grimsby-born Guy Martin, famous for his motorcycle successes at the Isle of Man TT, later forays into the pit crew of F1, before becoming a TV presenter presenter breaking various speed records. He's been seen prominently wearing a G-Shock G7900A as well as others. What a legend. And to give a different flavour, how about this Polar FT4 worn by Ed Carpenter in the IndyCar series? I had to sneak that in. The final brand I'll mention is the Swedish brand Halder that cut their teeth on models that went to space before moving to the track with the collaboration with Swedish driver Marcus Ericsson in 2014 and Edward Sandström, winner of the 24-hour Nuremberg ring. Their niche is double module options that include both an analog and a digital module that can be swapped over. In 2016, they would expand to military-grade GPS with the track master model. I hope you enjoyed this drag race through the world of driving digitals as we illuminated the various corners of this niche. You aren't finding this elsewhere, right? I've absolutely loved learning both about the watches but also about motorsport history. If you did, consider subscribing and I reckon you would like diving further into the digital watch iceberg with a video on screen now. Why not consider a 24-hour Le Mans style binge? I hope you have a great rest of your day.